Welcome back to the table everyone for some more Tokyo Express. We're going to do something a little different. Um, I know some folks have said, hey, it'd be great if you learned the advanced rules. and That's not happening anytime soon. Uh, could it happen? Sure, if I dedicated time to reading and learning the rules, maybe we could get to the advanced rules, but I just got too much going on unless like that's all I dedicate and then but there's a lot of games I like to play so what I'm gonna do is slowly incorporate ideas from like the standard game and advanced rules at some point and I have read I've read on some detection levels and moving in columns and things and uh, there's a lot there's a lot to take in so what I'm gonna do though is play some more of the basic rules but use one of the scenarios. So it's kind of a um, taking a standard s historical scenario, but I'm just going to play it with the basic rules kind of a deal. I'll, I'll show you some things I'm going to do though to make it work. So first of all, I'm going to do Cape Esperance. Esperance, I hope that's close. So the situation is, faced with American air superiority by day, the Japanese had begun the strategy of reinforcing and resupplying their Guadalcanal garrison by night. The Americans nicknamed these runs the Tokyo Express. The first serious American attempt to block the Tokyo Express resulted in this battle. The Japanese, not expecting a fight, were caught unready for the battle as the U.S. squadron capped their tea. However, a series of misunderstandings and foul-ups on the U.S. side, including communication breakdown and fire against friendly ships, prevented a full exploitation of the advantage. As it was, the vaunted Imperial Japanese Navy suffered its first serious defeat in night battle, losing their cruiser Hudutaka and destroyer Hubuki. They were sunk. All right, so what we have here from that setup to maybe see if we can sink the Hudutaka, which is weird because in the standard game, the Hudutaka was one of the sample ships. I guess apparently that little sample game was not historical based. Just enough to get you some basic rules. All right, so what we've got here, this is actually two formations. It does say in the rules I should have um, Commander Scott, but I didn't want to rip out more counters than I needed. So I'm just going with um, Callahan because he was already in there. I already had him pulled out. So he's going to be on the Heavy Cruiser San Francisco, and he is stacked with, if I can get that, the light cruiser Boise, and then we have the destroyers Duncan and Lafayette, and one destroyer, I guess uh, Farn Halt. I'm not sure what that one's supposed to be. Um, I could look it up though. It's going to be those three. Now with the Americans, you can kind of make any formations that you want, but the game said starting out like that's a formation, and then it said back here was another dis uh, formation. It's got the heavy cruiser Salt Lake City and the light cruiser Helena and then the destroyer uh, Buchanan and Barton. One thing that I found I think it's in the basic game. It might be in the standard rule book. Uh, I think it's in the standard rules. I'm going to show you this. This came up last time I was talking about ship names and I could look them up like online or whatever, try to find where the full ship names are. In actuality, they have that here in the standard. I won't go over all of it, but I totally skipped over this and forgot it was here, but they actually have all of the full names of ships. So I thought that was cool. So yeah, they, they simplified them for the counters, but then to help you identify exactly, you know, for historical purposes, they got the ship names there. So that's what we have. What I am borrowing from this scenario, and this is not in the base rules, but this is a standard rule concept, is the idea of hidden forces. So up in the, no, what is this? That would be the northern section of the map. We have hidden forces. So I've got two hidden forces here, two hidden forces here, uh, hidden force there and there. And these are task forces. And the special rule for them is for the very first game turn, each move segment, they just move ahead one hex. Because again, they were not expecting the Americans. So we're going to have them travel Guadalcanal for map purposes. So here they are coming out of the north. 
the slot. They're traveling down this area here, the Tokyo Expressway. And they're heading to get eventually to here, Guadalcanal, down here in the south. And Cape Esperance is right there. So we're going to try and move the American forces up to intercept. So technically, we don't know what we're running into. Uh, so one thing I'm adding here are these hidden force chips counters so there's a chance that uh, you know one of those task forces could be a dummy task force what's interesting is they have and I know I'm not using the hidden rules correctly right I'm just kind of throwing something together so I can kind of play and uh, what I'll draw is when I get in detection range of a task force I'll pull one of these and if it's a zero then it's nothing but there's also some level ones level two so there's more to the rules than just simply you get in detection range draw a chit but if I draw a chit that has so for example uh, number one on like a level one then there is a table that I can roll on and it would tell me the exact composition of that and then boom we could get into combat after that so there might be turns where nothing happens Maybe I won't catch all of the hidden groups or the hidden groups just go do whatever. The only thing that will be kind of time consuming on this will be determining the move orders for all the Japanese hidden units, which I'll do off of camera. But, um, you know, th there, this will probably be like one turn per video kind of a thing. But that's what I wanted to share with you was the where the Americans are setting up the movement. And again, for this first turn, each move segment, they're just going to move one hex forward, the uh, Japanese. Whereas the Americans, I'm going to try to give them some orders to have them go and scout out potential task forces to see if they have anything in them. So there's potentially a lot of dummy forces on the board. It would be very interesting if I drew, because there's seven zeros, and then there's three level ones, one level two, one level three and there's only six task forces on the board. So there's a chance that if I draw really lucky that I will draw absolutely no enemy task forces this night. So we came out and turned out there was nothing there or they totally skirted around us and they weren't in the places we thought they were. All right, well, I'm going to momentarily pause the camera so I can swap out the battery. And when I come back, what we'll do is turn one. All right, very first segment is the action chits. I put all the action chits in here. This is following the basic game where there's only six action chits and one of them has combat. The standard would have like 18 total. One is a US detection, there's a Japanese detection, and then the combat. So again, we're just gonna keep with the basic rules. I have assigned each uh, formation will have a speed of six because that's the fastest speed of their slowest ship. I can go slower than that if I want, but I want to get up there and scout. And I've given each one a 60 degree port turn. Uh, in the standard rules, I could just do like a keep them in column and then I would eventually put a little marker that would tell me at what hex the whole column would turn and they would follow. But we're going to do the basic game where um, you know, I could probably put that in. In fact, I've got some punched. That way, because uh, normally you would turn and then all of these would kind of turn on their own. And you can do that. Or I could put them on a column and then like this would say, okay, right here, boom, they'll all turn and still maintain their column. It's just that's the hex they'll turn on. So I'll, I'll use that. That's easy enough to put in. So that's one more kind of higher level gameplay mechanic. All right. Uh, so the Americans are set. Then we have to do the, uh, so we did the formation phase. We got the formations. There's the orders phase. Now the freedom of action phase. So let's just whip you over here. What this is, since I do have another formation, I want to see if they follow. So my Admiral Callahan has said, hey, guys, I want you all to do this. And the guys in back say, well, yeah, maybe. We're within... 10 hexes so we're not beyond this there's no uh, penalty because the ships are like right there but if I roll a zero or a one well if I roll a zero or less because there'd be like a minus two potential 
Uh, but basically, if I roll a 1, they will do something else. <sighs> okay, that's not what I wanted. So it says that uh, there's four ships in the formation. I rolled a 1. It says, ahead. If formation has the ahead order, treat as a countermarch. Well, they were ahead, so they're going to do a countermarch, which means they're going to try and flip and go backwards. Ah, oh, gosh. All right. As much as I disagree with that, as what the Americans would do, um, I'm kind of, you know, it's what they say would do. Let me see if I have a countermarch. Oh, look, I sure do. Well, good. I already got one punched out. Uh, but I do get to decide if it's going to be the starboard or port. So we'll go ahead and just replace this 60 degree port with a counter march port. And they will just turn around. Gosh, what a nice way to start. Okay. I can only imagine the discussion that went on the flagship here, the Salt Lake City. And the commander said, oh, okay, so team, our marching orders are to go straight ahead and whatever. Apparently they couldn't hear that. We talked about that. Communication problem, misunderstanding. Anyway, 10% chance of that happening and there it goes. All right, well, on a more positive note, we would do the Japanese formation phase. And then that I'll do off camera because that would involve, that's where I have to look on the little mini map and check in relation to where all the ta Japanese task forces are in relation to the nearest American unit, which would be pretty easy, and then roll a dice and see where they're going to go. And then that'd be it. Well, yeah, because they're in their formations right now. Oh, that's right. I don't even have to solve that because this very first turn, they're moving just straight ahead. I forgot about that. That was a special order. For this entire first turn, they're moving one hex straight forward each segment. So... Yeah, let's see then. So, uh, activity phase, first movement phase, U.S. move segment. So we'll go ahead. I've got a little move chart, and since they're going speed six, they're going to move one. Here's the move chart. They move one in each segment. So we'll just keep it simple. One, they all move one. Now, I did give them a 60 degree port turn. They can execute that whenever they want because Savo Island is up ahead and I really didn't want to deal with all the rules for shallow water, so on and so forth. So we'll just do that. And there, we'll move this other. Oh yeah, but they got a turn and they're gonna go ahead and do a column. So this guy will go here and begin the counter march to the port and they follow on. And there we go. That's the American first move segment, Japanese. Now I'm just gonna move the Japanese here. Uh, I don't have to swing the camera, but I'm just gonna move them all one hex forward. So they're just trucking on to uh, Guadalcanal, thinking they're gonna drop off troops, food, supplies, and whatnot. Then we're gonna draw our first action shit, and then We'll say that's that phase is done and we draw nothing awesome first phase done we get ready for the next phase all right we're going to take a look at the second move segment so that's the again u.s movement segment i'll just start with this first task force and they'll go one one ahead all right and this here, Salt Lake City is going to do another column turn. So we'll put this here. So they're going to go again, up one. Now they're facing that way. Uh, so eventually they were traveling northeast, so we want to get them southwest. So they got one more turn to execute, and then they'll be correct. And then this group will go and then they turn, boom, just like that. Okay, 
Then the second Japanese move segment, I'm just going to reach right up and move them all one hex forward. Now I'm checking just for range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so the Japanese are just a couple of hexes away from having, I would say, their visual range. Right now they're at about range 12 from the Americans. And the uh, visual detection range and gunnery range then at night is, is in the basic rules. 10 for the Japanese, 7 for the Americans. Um, so there's a chance that, depending on what I draw, no combat will happen this turn. Because if I draw it right now and there's no ranges, we would just skip it. So I'm going to draw. I'm trying to randomly shuffle it up. And it's blank. Alright, so i got to pull that out. Oh, did I put that one back in the bag? I sure did, didn't I? One, two, three, four. Yep. Uh, so the blank chits are supposed to be pulled out and not stuck back in the in the bag. That way each successive segment so there's one oopsie I did. I put it back in the bag because I forgot to keep it out. Okay, so this would be the third movement phase. So the Americans, I'm going to move them up one more. Hopefully you can still see that on the camera. Yeah, I'll just bounce it down a little bit here for you. Right there. All right, and keep their things with them. I figure I don't need to turn yet. Maybe I'll go a couple more hexes and then I'll turn. Uh, then... The last of the American turns to get into their counter march, it'll be right there. Well, I guess I really don't need that. Well, yeah, I do, because that reminds me they went there. But there you go. And then I didn't line this up very good. It should be like that. And then here they go forward, and they make their turn. All very column-like. Perfect! So they're almost done with their counter march. Yay! And then they just go straight ahead. So when they when we come back and redo order segments for the Americans, I've got to get them turned back around. This was just their crazy plan to do some kind of flanking action. Okay, uh, and then we draw one more chit. This will be for the third segment here and it is suspense blank all right nothing happens then um, because it's the end of the third move segment we would do the second Japanese movement orders phase however special rules are they're just moving ahead one hex um, each segment for this turn. That's their entire mission is move straight ahead because they assume nothing's going on tonight. Why would anybody attack at night? That's crazy. So here comes the fourth movement phase, U.S. movement phase. They go one. They're following plan. I think I'll probably move one more and then initiate my turn. And then uh, the Salt Lake City, the first part of the formation, moves forward one. And then these guys go, and they execute their last turn. And they're now all in line. And in fact, I'll just take that off. And now they're exactly where they want to be. Counter March has been successfully executed, so that will go over in my little orders bin thing. Still at speed six. Then the Japanese move segment. Bloom, bloom. I'm just moving them one. I know they're off camera still, but I don't need to, I didn't think I would need to move the camera and show you each time those move. Okay, so that was the fourth movement phase. We're gonna draw the fourth action shit. Come on and let's see what we get. It's blank. Nothing. All right. So we would then do the fifth movement segment. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and execute that column turn to the port now. So we'll move and then turn 
port. I even have all my ships facing the right direction this time. I'm so proud of myself. And they move up. <clears throat> and they'll keep their little counters with them. And we move, we move. Speed six all around the table. All right. And the Japanese move ahead one, 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 one. All right, they're getting closer. Now we got to draw the chit. Uh, at this point, I guess we have a 50 50 chance of having there be something. Aha, uh -huh, the combat one. All right, so what I'm going to do here is take a peek and I'm going to turn the light. I know the glare, yeah, it's horrible. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three. Boy, that just creates shadow light crazy. Well, I apologize for the lighting. The Again, I had it under this little plexi just to keep that map safe because this is, you know, dealing with a classic map here. I want to protect it as best I can. So I apologize for the shadows and glare. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. So close. Uh, that hidden force. So, yeah, I would have to draw when the hidden force is in range because... I think I would want to know if that hidden force could attack or not, right? So the hidden force, we're almost, almost to where we could tell if it's a, a real thing or a fake, one of the dummy forces. Uh, let me check if these other guys are in range. I don't think they are. I think they're a little further out, but they're all coming in close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not, ooh, okay. That force is actually in range. Now, I did not read the rules on hidden forces or anything like that. I just kind of put my own little thing on the board. Uh, again, please don't take this as a tutorial at all. This is me just playing a basic game plus. Now, I need to know if they plan on attacking. And in order to attack, I need to know if there's actually something there. So I've got this little baggie here with potential forces, which we mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to fluff it around for a minute, and I'm going to draw one of these. And if it's a zero, then it means it was a dummy force, and I'll take it off, or it's got stuff in it. And then we can, I'll determine what they are, and then we can try to do some attacks. So first I draw, and it is. It's a size one. Let me see if this is in range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's in range. We're going to do the same thing. Are these actual forces or just a blip on someone's radar screen that we weren't expecting? And it's a zero. All right, so that one was a dummy force. Uh, I'm going to just remove both of those and stick them over here. All right, I'm gonna pause for a moment, come back and roll, I'm gonna roll and to see what this is, and then uh, I'm gonna grab all their markers. But I will show you that chart. I have a chart which fell back into the box. All right, I'll show up when we pull the chart out and we'll roll and we'll find out what's in there. So just give me one moment. Okay, like I mentioned, there's quite a few rules when it comes to the hidden forces. And basically, I'm not doing where it says like number of ships or the T Sal, T Lam. Like, I don't even know what those mean. But what I'm doing is I just wanted this value here. So that's a one, which means I'm going to look here at the force size. So it's a small group that we've spotted, a one. I'm just going to roll a die 10 and see what's in there. So if I roll a 10, I mean, it could be a cruiser, two destroyer. I mean, it's going to be a lot of stuff. So we want to roll low. Well, we rolled a 9. Not as low as I thought. But it is going to be a light cruiser 
and two destroyers. Okay, that sounds pretty reasonable. We'll go ahead and get those on the board, and then we'll see what we can do with them. And here we have the task force that we'll be engaging first. It's going to be the light cruiser Nagata and the destroyer Suzukaze and another destroyer Yudachi. And I'm going to just put them as one formation. They're going to be one formation. I'll put the two destroyers in there and the lead ship will be the light cruiser Nagata. And what we'll do is shift the camera back here a little bit. And we're going to just kind of arrange this. And I know it bounces. Okay, uh, so we're going to put the destroyers here. Uh, and we'll put the light cruiser <clears throat> right there. We'll say that's how they came onto the board. Uh, yeah, there's probably, there was a deployment, I'm just, just, that's how I did it. I didn't, I didn't really think it through, I just stuck them on the board. But the light cruiser is going to shoot first, so this one was like 10 away, right? 9 away, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and he's going to do gunnery. The torpedoes, however, they do have torpedoes, so this is where I got to remember from last time how to do torpedoes. There was a torpedo targeting they might do. Uh, let's see. And that's a head-on. So it would be attacking in the ship's target bow. That's the front, so that's minus one. They are attacking from long range. So that's also a minus one, so that's minus two. US so it's a minus two. They have potential to hit, and that's the lead destroyer. Ooh, but there's a thing where it said they won't shoot torpedoes at, like, a long range. That I do remember somewhere. Like, they won't waste it on there. Mm. Let, me, let me come back and make sure we're going to target that, or... Yeah, because these three ships they can reach are all destroyers. So they might not fire torpedoes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it'd be outside. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so we'll scrap the torpedo firing this time because it's long range at destroyers. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember right from the basic rules, it says... They are going to fire torpedoes at, yeah, it's talking, oh, it's got salvos right up here. Uh, yeah, there it is. They put it in here in a handy chart for me. Let's look at this together. Because I know at some point someone will have to remind me, Eddie, remember when we looked at that chart and it said, well, let's look at it together. So Japanese target allocation, first attack, single sele uh, select single eligible attacker closest to any U.S. ship, which would be that destroyer there. Locate closest U.S. ship at which selected attacker can fire. Uh, oh, man. Well, I don't see. Yeah, there it is. OSL target attacking. Yeah. Oh, here it is. It's up here. Japanese do not fire at extreme range, nor at destroyers at long range. I was looking for it, and that's what I wanted to see. So there we go. Uh, the Japanese will not fire their torpedoes, and we'll just go right on to gunnery. And Japanese gunnery comes first. I think there was a combat segment reminder that talked about that. But... Um, Japanese will fire first and then the Americans. And this destroyer is closest, so we'll probably go at that first. Because there's a target allocation here. Um, battleships, cruisers, that's a light cruiser, heavy cruisers will try to fire against U.S. heavy ships. Light cruisers and destroyers will fire against U.S. light ships. Yeah, so we'll go with that there. We're going to fire at that destroyer. Normally I would figure all this out beforehand for you. 
but since it's just one ship, I'll, I'll just do this right here. Uh, so basically, we are at long range because it's eight or more hexes, and it's just going to be, oh, I can move back to the map so you can see now. So we're at 11 hex, well, nine hexes here. Oh, so if it's nine hex, yeah, eight or more, so it's nine hexes. This is just in the uh, bow because broadside would be just right here on the side. So uh, basically it's got a light gunnery of 16. So it's a light cruiser. So we're going to use the light gunnery cards. You know, I kind of shuffled these up from last time we played, but let me shuffle them up. We'll come back and then we'll draw and see what happens. All right, here we go. First flip. And the targeted is, is a destroyer. Well, look at that. Peppered it with shots. It's this, It's 16, but um, yes, yeah, so we'll hit the 15 because it's less than 20. So the 15, it's at long range. It does one point of damage. Well, good on them. Well, that's great for them. Good for the Japanese player. Not so good for the Americans. So that's the Destroyer Farnholt. I guess I could have looked up the full name of that one. But I'm just going to uh, go ahead and mark it down here. Let's find the Farnholt right there. It takes one point of damage. Which so it already now, uh, it's off there. Uh, so it's going to, in the in terminal stage, we'll have to calculate its damage and then its new speed because it's going to reduce. It's already at speed 7, so it's, it'll reduce to 6, which is fine because the form, task force was already moving at speed 6. But that will affect things like gunnery. So I'll need to keep that in mind for when we shoot which is one of those things that I forgot to do last time we played. I caught that later on. So hopefully we'll do a better job of keeping track of stuff like that for us. And that that actually should bring us to the end of that gunnery segment. That was the only, buddy, only person that could shoot and the destroyers can't fire back because again the Americans have a range of seven. Yeah, not not very good. And uh, then we just look here at the abbreviated sequence of play. So we have the sixth movement phase. We then do the U.S. movement. Uh, yeah, I can get rid of that port turn because they're already, they are, well, I'll wait till it's completely done. But they'll move one. And, oh, you know what? I wasn't even looking at, at the gunnery shifts here. Uh, ship is using primary. No, attacker has damage level marker. Nope. Oh, uh, never mind. I was wondering if there was one for shooting head on, but no, no, no modifier or anything if you're shooting at something head on. Head on, so no problem. All right, and then the destroyers move and they'll turn. They have now have executed theirs. And then they move up. And then I've got these Americans down here. I'll just leave the camera where it's at and I'm just gonna quickly move the other task force that's trying to run off the board. Good for them. And then all the Japanese move one, which again, I'm not gonna move the camera to show you all the Japanese positions while I move. And... Oh, I bumped one. Okay, well, I bumped one. That's okay. I'll move it. It doesn't matter exactly where it's at. And now we would do the terminal stage. All right. And that's where we go ahead and apply some mathematics here. Not much, really, honestly. Uh, what I would do is I'm going to take and write down a new speed. 6, just as a reminder, and that task force for when we do the next turn, they're already going to be at turn 6, so it's fine. Um, I was trying to think, 
I would have, there are markers for damage levels that you can put on there to help you remember, but I'm going to try and remember off the chart because, again, I didn't want to go and pull a bunch of markers. But that really is the end of the first turn. Let's lift the camera up and see how it looks from where we are. So right now, the two American task forces are moving opposite, nearly opposite of each other. You have the first task force charging in. This second task force, I've got to turn them around, give them like a 120, give them a couple turns to come back, or a counter march, because 120, uh, let's see, one, two, mm, I might give them a counter march starboard, and then they'll come around a little bit closer and then come back. That might be what I do. So it looks like the two task forces, depending on how the game goes, we're going to be probably engaging first the Japanese up here. Uh, looks like the my most southern task force can probably attack here. And then this task force is going to go ahead and engage here. And really, depending on how the AI moves things, these two potential task forces will do whatever. They could be nothing. could just be ghosts on the radar or whatever um, but I'm curious to see how it turns out anyway that's gonna be the end of first turn for the basic game plus is what I'll call this series and I'll put these in a playlist so hopefully in the future if you come back or someone watches this they will be all linked together and then folks can just you know you don't have to go searching through the website to, or my channel to find them all I'll just put them in a playlist for you let me know what you think, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.